We're so yeah. impolite to one another. <laughs> you know, I thought I was trying to be pretty clear that I'm not in favor of 10, and it's too expensive and too big, and I wanted something smaller, and I thought I mentioned 8, because I talked to everybody, Ray and Jason and George and Mira, I would support 8, so or, if it didn't come through, that was, because that clearly was what I was hoping. But would you have gone for something smaller? Uh, yeah, I would. City of Lake Forest, featuring topics like lo local news, sports, music, people, food, and occasionally politics. My name is Pete, and I'm joined with the voice of Lake Forest High School Scouts, basketball, football, lacrosse, you name it. Scoo! <laughs> All right. Walker. Set it up. <laughs> How you doing, Scoo? Doing good, Pete. How are you? Beautiful. Another beautiful Friday. Perfect day for that artificial turf. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Hey, uh, it's a beautiful thing. Hey, the uh, the magnificent trio. Let's go out for a little jog out there in the grass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah right. we'll, we'll, we'll get to them in a second. <laughs> hey, the yeah. podcast is sponsored by Shark Guy Beach Fishing, the premier South Florida beach fishing experience out of Longboat Key, Florida. The world renowned captains not only put you on the fish, but to help you and your family make a memory of a lifetime. Check them out at Facebook or at SharkGuyBeachFishing.com to schedule an outing. Shark Guy is your guy for your next charter. Disclaimer Scoo doesn't charter. Scoo, you don't charter, but I did see something where they're picking up some uh, dinosaur uh, teeth out there in uh, Florida. Really? Yeah, well, Shark Eye Outdoor, I guess the they're... Dinosaurs roamed there. They, they've been around. On toll. <laughs> well, also, uh, <laughs> you can find there. some people that didn't pay their bills out there, too. <laughs> We'd also like yeah. to say we're thankful for our Patreon supporters. <laughs> Reverend Luke Back from the Church of the Holy Spirit. Matt A, Elizabeth B, Coastal Lance, Otto, RDM, Broad Stop Breakfast Group in Kenosha. And the Greentown Tavern, Waukegan. Ar, 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 ar. Have you been there yet? I have not been there yet. Come on. Man, I'm get such a bad up. guy. I'm such a bad guy. But, you know, I did get some comments that, you know, we, we've gone every other week with the podcast and people are saying, hey, what's up? And if we got nothing to talk about, I mean... We could talk about me doing the laundry or something, I guess, but I don't know how many listeners. Yeah, I mean, we probably get you know, more listeners with that. If people ask me, I'm like, well, you know, it's kind of tough when you, no one wants to come on or there's no uh, input. You know, we can just babble on. That's fine too. We're good babblers. Yeah, well, well, there's not? been some, there's been some stuff uh, going on. Uh, what was it? Monday Continuing stuff. <laughs> Continuing well, uh, stuff. There was a guy that was pretty pissed off about that Tribune article on the uh, three aldermen. Good evening. I'm here today to register my concern as a taxpayer regarding developments in the ongoing lawsuit between the plaintiffs, 361 Westminster LLC, and 705 North McKinley Development against the city of Lake Forest. I, like many Lake Forest residents, read about the amended filing on this lawsuit in the March 27th issue of the Chicago Tribune. I found the article concerning. In the amended filing, Alderman Karras, Rummel, Bushman, and Bushman were named in the allegations that if true, could result in serious financial and reputational repercussions for the city. The article further stated that in their lawsuit, the plaintiffs are seeking damages of greater than $1 million, as well as the right to build the third building. I would suspect that if the plaintiffs are successful in this litigation, either through a settlement or judgment, that the city will pay out either the largest sum of money or close to in their history. As a taxpayer, 
I find that the use of my tax dollars on any kind of lawsuit tends to not be a very good return on investment. The next hearing pertaining to this lawsuit occurs this month. Since as a taxpayer, my dollars are being used to help fight this lawsuit, which the city has chosen to do, I can only hope we win this case outright. Anything less, in my opinion, would be deemed a loss, and if that loss occurs due to any of the alleged behavior presented in the amended lawsuit, then I believe the three aldermen cited on this amendment should resign immediately. Thank you. Thank you. I would just say that we have ongoing litigation, and so there will be no comment. Uh, Enlighten the crowd on the Tribune article, because that I'm not sure everyone has seen or. Yeah, kind of... I'll, well, Dan <laughs> Dorfman, I want to give him credit for it. I paid for the article. All right. And, I, you know, some people get a little pissy. But Wait, you uh, paid I, for it? Yeah, I paid for the article. I paid for the Tribune. It was in the Tribune. I think it was in the Sun, Waukegan oh, Sun. Oh, to, or... to, to get the article. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm trying to paraphrase it and I want to give the guy credit for his content, you know, but right. uh, uh, ahead of a key vote last September, a few members of the Lake Forest City Council pressured a fourth alderman to join them in a vote that prevented the construction of a proposed condi condominium, uh, the plaintiff's claim in an ongoing lawsuit. So there's a lawsuit going on. Anytime you got a lawsuit going on, people don't want to say anything. So this is like right. all alleged stuff. I'm we're we're just reporting the news, right, Scoo? Right. But allegedly, what happened was, uh, and we don't like to say block the but project. Right. We like to say uh, I believe it's called West the McKinley Mc Road project. <laughs> McKinley Road project, right, right. Uh. But it seems to me, uh, Alderman Jennifer Karras, Alderman Melanie Rummel, and Alderman Ray Bushman participated in a concerted campaign through emails, text messages, and telephone calls to persuade fellow Alderman Eileen Luby Weber to change her vote before a September 7th council meeting. At that meeting, the council affirmed in a four to three vote with Alderman Jed Morris abstaining. Come on, Jed. A, a previous vote by the city's historic preservation commission denying a certificate of appropriateness for the proposed building that would be just east of the city's downtown. So that's just right about right across from the library or kitty corner from the library, right? Yeah, where the um, right on Western Western on Westminster, uh, not Westminster, Westminster. Um, where the uh, it's a little vacant lot that tucks back um, and butts up against the yeah library. it's got a big wooden fence around it it's got a bunch of dumpsters back there and the I'd rather have the lot. dumpsters there the dumpsters look great <laughs> I like the I like the crane there not the crane but the uh, they just knocked down the house adjacent to that oh. um, but I like the big truck there that they got sitting yeah. there but uh, yeah but that's the, uh, well, Alderman Rummel, Karras, and Bushman's efforts to convince Alderman Weber to vote to affirm the HPC's denial demonstrate an utter lack of good faith to making a diligent effort to achieve the development required by the development agreement. The following read, moreover, by making their decision to affirm the HPC even before the public hearing on plaintiff's appeal, these aldermen denied plaintiffs their constitutional right to due process of the law. So... It also claimed that Karis, Bushman, and Rummel breached their contra contractual obligations to the plaintiffs to act in good faith with diligent efforts to affect all outcomes in development agreement. Huh. <laughs> Rummel, Karis, Bushman, and Weber, as well as City Attorney Julie Tappendorf, all declined to comment on the suit, citing the pending litigation. Told you. So I guess May 18th. What are you doing May 18th, Scoo? Uh, May 18th. What day is that? <laughs> that's the 18th day of May. Yeah, that's usually a Wednesday. That's a Wednesday. So Why? It looks What's like going on then? That's when the next court date is. Oh, <laughs> I won't be going. <laughs> I've got other things I need to do. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Um, now, these same three, these are the same three that want to go out uh, 
do some laps out on the uh, deer deer park uh, deer turf, path. huh? Yeah, yeah. Just ironic that it's you know, yeah. It's tough to comment on it just because I'm still shocked at what happened behind the scenes, and and this project has been rambling on for a few years now. And my understanding is it was originally approved and approved again, and it got to this point where I guess it went back to the HPC. And that's where all the shenanigans started because the vote before that was a four, three vote in favor of doing it, I believe. And then they pushed, or uh, yeah, I'm not, pushed it back to the HBC to review through their 17 criteria and then so, all the stuff started <laughs> so, <laughs> pulling, so school, let pulling me get, the vote. <laughs> let, let me continue. The, yeah. plaintiffs, the plaintiffs are seeking damages of greater than 1 million as well as the right to build the third building. Who's paying that one million, Scoo? Well, uh, if you can see yourself in the camera here, like I can see myself, that answers your question because we are taxpayers and we so, get to foot the bill for this. <laughs> okay. And that one million, that's about what, 10% or so, give or take of the artificial turf? Yeah. And, you know, I'm not even going to get it. Well, we can get into the artificial turf, but even to compare it, there's, there's no set cost, which I guess all the crazy craziness around the turf, and the, there hasn't been a final dollar amount really tagged to that. So yeah, yeah. It could be yeah. more. Could, it could be more. It could be more. less. Well, it's yeah, always going to be more. But so, yeah, it's, th this is actually real. <laughs> yeah. The turf well, is still kind of up in the air it's still got to get approved final stuff and all that they're just going through the preliminary stages to get actual numbers but uh th this this loss is real yeah i mean isn't this kind of look i i we don't know we're, we're right you know paraphrasing an article all you can see is what you see <laughs> what you see and then doesn't the uh attorney general of lake county doesn't the attorney general of illinois don't they care about stuff like this? Uh, you just dipped the question well beyond my uh, <laughs> How do your skis, my skis too? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, you know, as a citizen for 58 years of this lovely community, I don't remember anything where a lawsuit occurred. Now there's been lawsuits against the city, but lawsuits against the city because of alderman's actions I, I just haven't i mean we're not as this all unfolds you know so initially you see okay you watch it and go yeah they they voted it down okay some people are going to like it some people aren't going to like it right but then <laughs> you know the petitioner files a lawsuit and you kind of start scratching your head he's going why would someone you know file a lawsuit you know, it went through the process supposedly, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and then it, all this stuff starts cropping up and, you know, you find out that, you know, there's shenanigans going on with aldermen trying to not give the, the uh, petitioner due process, which is just absolutely crazy. And they swayed a swing vote to go their way by, you know, whatever it's saying, emails, you know, text, text whatever, phone whatever. calls, whatever. But uh, the funny thing is, <laughs> I went back and viewed that particular council meeting. Yeah. And I looked at the fourth alderman that was that was coerced. And I say Luby? coerced in my sense. To, is it Luby or Luby Weber or Weber? Luby Weber. Luby Weber. The flower, and, flower lady. Yeah. And the look on her face throughout that meeting was, I mean, I think she was going to hurl. She looked like <laughs> and, uh, someone that was uh, getting the which, arm which, to her. Which now answers all the questions. Why was she? Because, you know, I don't even think she was wanting to do it, but got pressured to. And then, of course, now look at what we're at. And we're at a lawsuit. The city's at a lawsuit that, you know, I don't know how that's going to end up, but if it goes through, 
you know, the city's got to pay. That's us. That's taxpayers. And never would happen would have happened if the you know the shenanigans as I call them that the three aldermen were doing. You know, I, I mean, what blows my mind is that. You know, you, as an alderman, they did it on the record. <laughs> yeah, they, well, that's the one thing they did it on the record, which just brings in a whole other stuff. But to sit, you're supposed to be doing what's as an elected official, doing what's right for the community now and in the future, and they completely went against that, and and now it's created a lawsuit that. You know, I know what Tom was saying when he was speaking. It's like calling for their resignation. They should. They, their actions, illegal actions or whatever you want to call them, created alleged, this lawsuit. But who, cr- alleged, created yeah. this lawsuit, plain and simple. And, you know, who knows? I mean, if they didn't well, do all the behind the scenes stuff, Pete, and they go to the council meeting, who knows to say uh, votes could have changed by aldermen, you know, as it was. So who knows? I mean, it, they might not have had to even do what they did. And because what they did, um, and now the city is facing a lawsuit and, <laughs> and that Pay unfortunately, up, yeah. I mean, what, and what's even more egregious, I think, is that, you know, fast forward to the um, turf controversy. Yeah. It's the three again. And you know what, Scoop? <laughs> It's the, no, no, wait, wait, it's the three aldermen again against it. And on top of it, um, the city council meeting where, where what was put forth in front of the city council was the plan to take it to an engineering study and evaluation to find out, get more numbers on doing this. It wasn't really necessarily like we're going to do it because it's still got to come back and forth. But the one alderman, sat there and all she did was she was cackling about oh this is going to cost the taxpayers a dollar or 170 dollars a tax bill and going on and on about that but yet she created a lawsuit that's actually happening and it just blows my mind that they scoot can i can i do you one better yes (laughs) here let me top that same alderman rubble okay History doesn't repeat itself, but it sometimes rhymes. This could be a repeat. Those three people, they agreed to have the consult, whatever. They had an agreement from the last meeting, right? Mm. And then they had the city council meeting this past week. And then they say, hey, wait a minute. I didn't agree to that. (laughs) You know what I'm talking about? Oh, oh, I mean, are you talking about this week's uh, city council meeting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely continues to just blow my mind so that that this monday's meeting was about just passing some omnibus stuff and of course the um what came up was the turf they uh went through the staff like they always do their job correctly and went through the whole process of um vetting out the right contractor and all that to to begin the engineering study and all this stuff. To uh, entertain a motion to approve the awarding of the recommend or the awarding of the contract per the here. Let me read it. <laughs> uh, approval of the unanimous recommendation from the Public Works Committee to award the architectural engineering services for three um, for, sorry for new synthetic turf fields at Deer Path Community Park to Hitchcock Design Group in the amount of $388,000 plus 10% contingency in the amount of $38,800 for a total of $426,800. So So moved. Second. Second. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Morris? Aye. Alderman Rommel? Nay. Alderman Preschlack? Aye. Alderman Gashkarian? Aye. Alderman Bushman? Nay. Alderman Weber? Aye. Four yay, two nay. Motion carries. Thank you. All, all it was was now it comes to city council and approve it, right? That's what that's for. <laughs> I mean, basically. But but they agree. And you got Bushman, it. and then you got Bushman arguing. He wants to re bring it up and vote again on it, like it's like, you know. And I think it was uh, 
Preslak. Um, oh, you got who, fired up. I like that dude. Yeah. I mean, it's like, are these people crazy? I mean, it's just like constantly, constantly, they can't let stuff go and look what it's created. And, and here's the thing. And I, it's in my, it's all gets back to what I, all gets back to the caucus and how we oh. select our people. Okay. And, um, First off, you got an alderman. So here, here's, uh, and I know, Pete, how you feel about the caucus and all that stuff. Oh, but, don't uh, worry. I got something for you. And, and that, you know, we should probably hire an outside firm and all that. But I'm going to say this again. The caucus process works. It's the people that deviate from it and all that. So, and this has been, you know, whether it's a hard written rule or it's always been kind of a rule of thumb when we're when you're on the caucus and i should say we because we're all caucus members bring forward a potential alderman one of the underwritten rules is that alderman potential alderman should have served on one of the five top boards meaning parks and rec plan commission um building review board i think hpc is in there and I think zoning I might be wrong, but there's five yeah. boards that are, you know, and the whole theory and process behind that is that these people, they're serving on these boards. Number one, they're working with city staff because those boards are really, you're intertwined with the city staff, knowing how um, the city manager type of government that we're under um, operates and works and you learn how to work with staff and see what they go through. Um, and to be an elected official, like an alderman, you want to have that background because it is a daunting task to be on the council because behind the scenes, there is a lot of work and you're representing the entire city. You're not representing your specific ward that you're in. Yes, you represent your constituents there, but you're more, you look globally. Um, and the unfortunate thing with how the caucus has operated in the last several years is, first off, we have, of those three aldermen, one has never served in any capacity through the, the processes. Which one is Nor, that? Um, Karis never right. has served on any boards or commissions and well, she's and, piecing out anyways. Well, I, I understand that, but she's pieced out last year, but yet she's involved in all these things for Good some point. reason. Um, so she never served. So she got somehow through our process, she kind of jumped the shark and was all of a sudden an alderman. And that's the caucus. Yeah. Um, Cause there were a lot better qualified people in the first ward. Oh, that were not looked at. And Pete, you were there at the time. So I don't oh, know yeah. that whole process, what happened. But so that was one and nothing against Jennifer and all that. But it, it's you have to understand how the process works in order to be an elected official, because you're constantly working with the city staff. And a, a lot of these people don't even realize that, you know, Lake Forest is a city manager run government. You know, I've heard people all the time going, oh, yeah, the mayor and the alderman, they get paid so much. No, they don't. It's a city manager run government. Everything funnels through Jason. They all report to him, and that's how the structure is. And so you and he's doing to, great despite all this. Crap. Yeah. And, and so are the staff. And you have to work and the staff. as a volunteer. You're not really – you are making policy as an alderman and passing tax levies and all, but you're also working – very closely with the staff because that's how it operates. So you got one person that's never done that. How that happened, I don't know. And another person who, again, never was on any of the five major boards. Last I checked. I mean, I think she was on Ellawa Farms or Open Lands or something like that prior. But again, and, and she's served for a while. So she understands how the process works but again coming on board when she did there no experience besides her husband was mayor but that doesn't count and then the biggest one who i am more disappointed in of the three than the two 
is Bushman. Yeah. Because he was, I believe he was on BRB and plan commission, if I'm, I'm corrected. So he knows how the whole process works. And he's the one that continues to seem like he just wants to go against everything. I mean, the sky, the city says the sky is blue. He says, great. All of them do. And it's just progress is being just thwarted by people that, you know, we've relied on as citizens. You know, it, it's like we can't. And, and again, you could go on for ever just going backwards in time and saying, okay, this we didn't get through, this we didn't get through, this we didn't get through, which in the long run benefits the city, but we have a past history of it. And now it's just kind of like we have this brick wall that we're going up against when it comes to progress and no one wants progress. I mean, we want progress, but we don't. And now we got aldermen that are behind the scenes you know, doing what they can shenanigan wise to prevent that. And it's just, it's sad. I mean, it's, that is not how this town's supposed to work. And again, I think it gets back to the whole process of putting people on these boards and commissions that one aren't so experienced or don't want to be on there because they don't show up to meetings or the, the yeah. vetting process has to oh. change. And hopefully with a new regime on the cost. Well, the well, that Scoo, changes a bit. <laughs> well, well, Scoo, the, the and caucus, I know where you're going. <laughs> the, the caucus now, the number one thing that they're supposed to do is vet, right? Vet right. meaning interview. They're an HR department. HR department, right? Okay. So if that's what their number one job is, who vets the vetters? Nobody. Well, uh, I mean, again, I, and this is where I guess you and I may disagree a bit is yeah the the caucus who the caucus has in each four wards right because the mm -hmm. city has four wards and you have nine people in each ward yeah. collectively getting openings in the city from the boards and commissions and if it's in their ward they're interviewing and they have a, a, a huge database of past and present volunteers that want to mm -hmm. step up and raise their hand. And their job is to, if I have a second ward or first ward position open, that second ward group goes out and scours the ward to find people. But that's not happening anymore. You know, it's laziness. It's like, well, well you know what? I talked to a buddy and he said he wants to do it. And Scoo, you know, take a sip of it. tea. Take a sip of tea. Let me let me go through let me talk about not vetting the vetters, okay? Because look, I was there two years before, you know, no mas. <laughs> okay. Mike Adams was a past caucus president. Mm -hmm. He picked his, his executive board who he wants to have around them, okay? The caucus committee doesn't have a say. They just supposedly put their hand up and say they want to do it. But that's not what happens. Mike Adams says, you know what? These are the people that I want around me, starting with Kim Fail. All right. So you got Kim Fail. She's going to be the, uh, the vice president who will turn into the next president. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. She selects who she wants around her on the executive board. Okay. Now they'll say the executive board is only, you know, five or six votes. Okay. But the executive board, I would, I've seen they carry influence. They carry influence in an alderman meeting where they say, if all things being equal, please vote for the female. So, <laughs> so I'm just saying that's influence. Now, these people they had selected, okay, Mike Adams turned to Kim Fail, and then Kim Fail turned into David Hunt. He's the new president, okay? You have the new executive board that was named. Did you see that, Scoo? Mm -hmm. All right. Let me just go through the board, uh, the new executive board, okay? Who's going to be your next president next year? Chris Bennis. Why? Because he's the vice president now. All right. Internal communication, Steve Rattay. He's in the first ward. I know Steve. Good guy. He just joined last year. So he's. Boom, one year he's on the executive board. First, first. that's part, part, part of the problem. <laughs> well, I don't, 
You know what? Well, I don't know him from I, other than he's a good guy to sit next to. We've had good no, not him. not him. I'm not saying him. Yeah. Okay. I'm saying one year and you're on the exact council. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm. Okay. So then, uh, external communications from Ward One. You have Susan Saylor Daly. She was uh, the Ward One chair who was there when I was there. So you have of the six people on the executive board, David Hunt. Steve Rattay, Susan Saylor, Daly are all on Ward 1. <laughs> okay. That's a good name. Uh, uh, Kristen Vallely, she's the secretary. Uh, she's been the secretary for more than this coming year because I think the last secretary never showed up for any of the meetings. So Kristen had to pitch <laughs> in and do all the work. And, then and, the and, and I, I'll be honest with you. What? what? <laughs> when that comes up and they're asked who wants to be secretary, I am sure there are basically zero arms going up that, oh, yeah, I want to be secretary. And it's probably you know, who I don't want to take notes on the whole meetings yeah, yeah. all the time. And all. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Joe O'Ritty, uh, I think he's a treasurer now. And I think he was new last year on the, on the caucus. So. Uh, you know, there, there, there you go. Now, when I was there, I put a pretty book, big push on uh, vetting who the president is going to be, the vice president's going to be. It's as simple as going to Lake County records and seeing what you see and then doing a secondary check. So if anybody cares that's out there uh, and anybody that touches money, whether you're a treasurer or you're doing the uh, special events, and I think I forgot, forgot the special event person. Yeah, the fundraiser, uh, Cynthia McCullough is on uh, fundraising. So there's your seven people, three are out of Ward 1. Uh, why is that? Because David Hunt was out of Ward 1. Now, right. well, we got also a uh, upcoming mayoral position to fill and but I, again, I, I'm not going to get down into that. Those weeds. Well, it's if but nobody's I, I, I looking. Think, but but I think the thing, Pete, is it's not a matter of who vets the exec council. The exec council has taken on a self um, righteous um, stance Hubris. lately because the, the exec council, and this is kind of funny because I've heard this in our past conversations with certain people that yeah. uh, all the all the exec council is there to do is to manage the day-to-day -day, if you will process of the caucus committee which is exactly 100 percent accurate however um back to the question yet so those nine people in each ward you know they'll bring up whoever it is to the full caucus and then there's a vote on it and yes the the council exec council has one person one vote just like everyone else but they've taken on this stance of um righteousness where they think they are higher than that and that they can influence and i think the influence comes from they're picking these people like you just said david hunt who's picking his uh, exec council based on, you know, who he likes in the first ward and all that. Well, that influence then comes, is trickled down to these new members and all that, where I think it's just, uh, you know, the process is skewed in a sense because, you know, whoever you're nominating is, you know, it, it, it's contingent on what the vice president and the president feel, which I think is a joke because that's not how it should be. And I also think it's a joke because I think, you know, there's, I know these presidents and vice presidents, whoever are, you know, getting input from council members, which I think is, you know, council members, you know, anyone can refer people, but I don't know if it's right that, you know, they're, they're asking people about certain people and vice versa. That's really not, um right they shouldn't be doing that if you're, you're the caucus is a separate entity and they can take referrals from anyone but 
they should be making decisions within that body, not making decisions based on other people, if that makes sense. And that's just, so it's, the, again, I am I believe in the caucus system and all that, and I want to emphasize the caucus system. However, a system and process can always be manipulated by people. And if you get the wrong people doing it, you get to a point where I think we're at in the city is saying, you know, God, what, what's going on here? All these boards and commissions, we can't fill boards and commissions. We can't, you know, people get kicked off boards and commissions. People don't show up. It's like, you know, and guess who's the end result victim of this is the city staff because the city and staff the taxpayers. Has, and the taxpayers, but the city staff more than because they're trying to do their job. And when you have to interact with people that don't really care what happens or they think the city staff people are below them, it, it's just crazy. And that's how it is right now. And it's, um, and Jason and his staff are doing whatever they can and they're doing admirably. And, and I've disagreed with city staff on stuff before in my past and all that, but you know what, at the end of the day, you know, boards and permission boards and commissions are supposed to be there to work with them, not work against them. And that's what it seems like. And when, and I say work against, work against doesn't mean, um, you're consciously doing it. Work against is when you are on a board or commission and you don't read the packet or you don't show up to meetings, that's working against because you can't help them, you know, make decisions. So I, it's full circle. It's a shame, you know, back to Tom when he was, what he said at the city council meeting, you know, hopefully this thing. Well, Scoot, you know, is it a, those three aldermen allegedly is that a question of character, what they did? If it's true. Ethics? Well, of course it is. Of okay. course it is. It's a question of ethics and character, right? Right. So who picked those people? We I mean, did. Who, we, we did. Well, the caucus committee, these people of Lake Forest, right? And then right. who put the caucus, those people? The caucus brought them forward and right. they said, we are we are supporting and the caucus is representing the city. And when the caucus brings these three aldermen forward and says, this is who the caucus supports, you know, that's why it's interesting. There's, you know, typically, you know, these unopposed or not unopposed, but opposed elections, no one that on the opposition side rarely gets voted in because the caucus person is the, you know, so yeah, I mean, it's the caucus. If they're stepping up and raising their hand to volunteer, they're not getting paid, then they have an obligation to do the right thing and what that volunteer position calls for. And these people on the caucus right. are not doing that. Because it's tied to, we got aldermen with questionable character and ethics, and it stems from the caucus, and nobody's keeping it. Yeah, but you caucus. can't correlate. No, you can't. I mean, How the head can of the you caucus. Not correlate it? Because, Pete, the head of the caucus when those aldermen were put on is not the head of the caucus now. So it does, to me, it doesn't, you know. Well, it's the same system of passing on the vice president and the president. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Same system. Okay. We, can, we can disagree. And now we're at a point where we got, you know, people inexperienced um, getting the city in lawsuits. How do we correct it? Um, well, we've talked about this before. My opinion is, you know, and I know it's hard to do, but the city can't intercede in it, but the mayor can. And I think the mayor should be taking a look at the caucus process and saying, is this, you know, can we tweak it? I've always said, you know, I'm not going to say this and not have a solution. My solution is the mayor should have an outside group that he puts together that um, is kind of that intermediary between the caucus and him when it comes to people being moved forward. And I think that group big or small, whatever it is, should be, you know, consistent of either ex, ex aldermen, ex mayors, or, you know, people that have served in a, that capacity to oversee stuff. Because I think, um, or I, I know, because I've talked to people, and the opinion is of the same, that the caucus right now is a broken system, because it's not working the way it should be. But again, it's the people. And hopefully this new caucus that they've 
redone. Now the the ingoing and outgoing, these new members on there see that and they understand what their role is. And it's not a good old, I shouldn't even say good old boys because it's not, it's not a newcomers club where all we're doing is picking people we're friends with and that's newer to the community. So I, I don't know. I mean, so I, just, I the, don't. What, one of the reasons I left the caucus was because of this executive board issue. It's not a mm-hmm. secret. Okay. Right. And before I left, they're going to change the process where the, the committee members could nominate people to go on the executive board. Right. Didn't do it. It's the same right. thing. Hunt picked the, that's why you got three people from Ward right. one on there and you you're going through the same process. So it's just going to keep going. Uh, and, and now we're starting to get no, I mean, the, the media is starting to pay attention to Lake Forest saying, hey, wait, what's going on? I left Chicago to get away from this. Now I'm back in it. Every time I leave, they pull me back in. <laughs> so, yeah, but, you know. Um, so do you think uh, Melanie Rummel is going to be mayor now? Wow, that's a good jump. Um, absolutely not. I, I, would, I would not have faith in her Karis, or um, Bushman, Bushman, and and Luby to be mayor. And I know it's a aspiration of every alderman is yeah, I'd like to be a mayor someday. But I, I don't think um, those should be to answer Melanie. No, absolutely not. As a voter, as a taxpayer, I don't want to see my taxes go up because of a lawsuit that was. Yeah solely created because of what some aldermen did behind the scenes to, I mean, no, those people don't deserve to be mayor. And you know what they, you know, it's like Tom uh, and Tom's a great guy. The guy that spoke at uh, yeah. the, the city council, a wonderful guy. And he's absolutely right. If this lawsuit does go through, they should resign. And it, honestly, probably resign now because it's just, you know, we have other things in the city that need pending council so approval. So if the, if the plaintiff that. said, hey, those three aldermen resign, we'll drop the lawsuit. Let us build our building and drop the lawsuit. Yeah, I, I don't know how that works. I, I doubt that is a... Is you a got a magic wand. Hey, it's our show. We can do whatever we want, Scoop. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, I, I Outside the lawsuit, I think, you know, if, it, if it's our only our opinion and how it they should step down. They should have stepped down a long time ago and they should step down because again, what an alderman's responsibility is, is to work with staff and do the right thing for the city now and in the future. And now that this stuff is out in the tribune of all places, they should be stepping down because if they're not going to respond to it. And unfortunately at the, um, council meeting you know it's it was you know tom spoke on public um non-agenda items and you know unfortunately unfortunately finished my point is when what tom said you know unfortunately the council members just like every board and commission member when it's time for the public to speak cannot respond that's just the process but what they should have done is they should have stepped up and spoke because you know i you know granted there it's a lawsuit going on and no comment no comment but i I see what my eyes are seeing (laughs) i mean tell me where this is not really true i mean it's you know i'm i'm not that stupid but man if you're sitting there using city emails and texts and all this and trying to persuade somebody to who already had voted in a past meeting one way now you're like you know, let's try to strong arm this person to change her vote. You know, before even the the petitioner has a chance, it's just crazy. And they should step down. They should answer. Uh, I know they can't and all this, but you know, th- again, you said this is our little yeah, world, right? Magic now. wand. They, sh- they should be customer service. They should be stepping up, explaining themselves. And then stepping down. I mean, it's just 
they're by not stepping down, they're just creating more angst for the city and, and the residents. As you mentioned, that you know people are looking at the city now. I mean, it's embarrassment. If anything, it's an embarrassment. And on top of it, we have another freaking issue going through the city that these three aldermen don't like. And yet one alderman sat there and was just kind of downplaying everything and saying how much it's going to cost the freaking taxpayers to do this. And yet she understands she's created a lawsuit. I, I mean, it's just crazy. And on the, on the other I, end I just it, so pissed off because it just is embarrassing. Well, and two, uh, two people we didn't talk about is Luby Weber and uh, Jed. If you're going to be an alderman, you have to be a leader, right? You're leading people, right? Well, I mean, you're voted, so yeah, I guess. Well, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> Luby Weber, I mean, she runs a business. Uh, she leads people. Why? Sure. Why is she getting pushed around by those three? I don't know. I don't know into her mind. Why? why? And then the the, the other thing that... uh, And her father was an alderman before that. So, I I mean, and a good alderman. So, I don't... It's just... (laughs) Because in one of those records, it says, oh, I wish we would have had this judge because I know the judge. Who said that? It's in the FOIA. It's in the lawsuit. Alleged. Alleged. But, and then Jed, he abstains from the original lawsuit. And then he throws uh, a monkey wrench into things where he says, you know what, give me, uh," he wants to reduce the size of the uh, artificial turf or whatever. And that caused Melanie Rummel and the other two to say, oh, I thought we didn't agree about it last week. You know what I'm talking about? I know exactly what you're talking about. I mean, again, I'm not going to parallel Jed and the the um, not abstention from the building and tie that to the the fields, but I mean, he abstained from voting because he lives in one of them. Which, <laughs> hey, uh, that all the aldermen should be abstaining because they live in Lake Forest. I mean, come yeah. on, Jed, he should have been voting. It, it's you know it's a cop out and it's on weak. the field i'll say on, Pete on field, says it's weak yeah and it is weak and on the field stuff his you know his try to let's make it smaller um you know and now everyone wants to do this high, you can't do a hybrid you can't do part turf part regular uh, synthetic turf i mean you can't shrink it i mean my god these people just and they, they agreed you know, to it last what it is. time. Yeah. It was already agreed well, to. Well, they agreed to take a look at if it can be. Jed wanted to, if it can be, shrunk a little bit. But Jed's- listen, our, our hybrid in the city would be our 14 other grass fields that have to still be maintained. And now a turf field. That's what a hybrid is. That's what we will have in Lake Forest is that hybrid. But to cut this in half just defeats the whole purpose. It's just, it's just, it's lunacy. And they can, we, we deserve better, Scoo. I'm just sorry. We deserve better. Well, we got it. But it, yeah, it, I agree. And, and of course, you know, people don't really, I hate to say this, don't really care, you know, because look at the voting turnout. And to get these guys on, I mean, it's not like we have 20 plus thousand. I know everyone can't vote, but, you know, it's a pretty low number that turn out to vote for the alderman and mayor. And well, all if the attorney general looks at things and then he hits the tribune again, then I think more people are going to ki- whatever. I hate, just hate to get to to all that. Uh, it's, let's it's, talk it's, about- shame on shame on them. It's just like, Why? Why? All the stuff, all the good. Well, that can be Pete, you were in Chicago. Isn't when the aldermen in Chicago are doing stuff like this, aren't they getting paid under the table and all that? <laughs> Allegedly, I mean, old school, you would go to the bars and say, hey, I'll buy you around. Come on, hop on the bus. Let's go vote. And, you know, come, you know, I, I've, 
I've heard that that goes on, but <laughs> this is just, a, it's a mixture of hubris, laziness, ego. I think it's all ego. It's just, you know, what are you gaining out of it? That's my question is what's the, to, to, to go against progress. What, what is the uptick benefit for the city? If I'm an alderman and, and you can vote no on stuff, that's fine. But when you're going to vote no, what is the upside to doing that? Is it, it, I mean, this is all about progress in our community and growing our community for the future. I, I don't understand that. The, these what three you, people, they're trying to placate the 5% of people that make up 80% of the negativity on social media and all the chirping, yeah. all the Terry typers. I, is, you is know, what I and think. I don't even, I don't even say that. Pete. I think it's the fact that, you know, it, it's, it's the lack of wanting to understand um, the issues that are at hand for the council and the staff. And it's more, we rouse up, the community in certain areas. And it's unfortunate because a lot of these people, not all of them, but a lot of them don't really look into the past of a certain issue, like this building that's gotten so much controversy. I don't think anyone that has screamed against it can really sit down and tell me the whole history. And it's a several year history on this thing. <laughs> And it's just this cursory, like we're trying to kill the historic world in Lake Forest. And that's, that's the result. That's the, that's the, I stand by that type of thing that a lot of people are taking without understanding what really is going on. And that's what really is sad. And you know, people take that and try to run with stuff and then people aren't educated on things. So we need leaders with character and ethics. That's all. Yeah. I agree. All right. Let's get on to something uh, fun. Should Lake Forest have a public swimming pool? <laughs> yeah. By far, we got the most responses. We got even more responses for, from this than we did for the pizza. 30 of our viewers? What was the... Uh... Oh, so like times 20. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but what do you think the percentage was? Oh God! Percentage of what? Or just pool say yes or no. Should we have a public pool? Yes or no? Sixty forty. Which way? For a pool. You are close. Fifty-five forty-five. Wow. And will never remember, happen. <laughs> Unfortunately, well, we had our uh, unscientific uh, survey or poll with ourselves that said 60% of the people in uh, Lake Forest are part of country clubs. Well, it's, <laughs> looks like, <laughs> it looks like it's more like 45%. So we were off. Yeah. I, well, I mean, well, and the other thing we didn't talk about was um, residents with their own pools. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I just, like I said, last time when we talked about it, I mean, the pool issue, it, it went through, several iterations to I think two referendums voted down so it, it's never gonna I mean I, I you know what I like I'll to see it but I'd never see it <laughs> all the uh, Terry typers out there I, I bet you they're they're all pool people four pool four pool yep yeah they're four <laughs> yep <laughs> okay fair enough so there you go <laughs> Question asked, question answered. Anything else, Scoo? Yeah, I got a lot of stuff, Pete. Go. This came in the mail. You see this? Hold on. Let me see. It's, no, it's, I didn't. It's backwards. It came in the mail yesterday. It's the dialogue. dialogue. Yeah, that dialogue? goes out on the city. It's about what's going on in the city and all this. Okay. But my buddy, Rob Carmichael, on the cover. Who is Rob? Cover story. He he is the uh, curator at the um, Wildlife Discovery Center out at Ellawa Farms, and um, a great little article done on him by our own. I don't know if you can see this, it's backwards. David Sweet. 
No. Dave. David Sweet wrote it. Yeah. He's so, a writer and a half, man. I mean, it's a great wildlife discovery is great. It's a, you know, if people haven't gone out there, go out there. If you have, if you're looking for something to donate to, donate to the wildlife discovery center, Rob Carmichael, what is it? 95, 96, 97 went to uh, Fred Jackson at the time, the executive director and said, Hey, I have, a, I have an idea. And, um, you know, Fred and the city manager at the time kind of looked at him and said, okay, go for it. Um, and his idea was creating a haven for, you know, orphan wildlife, so to speak. And he started this thing in the rec center in the old art room. Um, and he had cages of a few animals, snakes and all that. And it, it has grown into a national, if not worldwide, um, venue for rescues. For uh, they moved him out from the rec center to Eloa Farms. He's taken that thing to educating our community, our kids on wildlife, everything you can think of. They have some fantastic animals out there, and um, he's just taken an idea. And Good expanded, and it's the and there's nothing like it in the state. You know, he's been on WGN, he's been on national stuff. I mean, it's what he has done in the time. And I, I'm I'm proud. He's a friend of mine. He grew I grew up with him and his twin brother, and it's just he does not get the kudos that he deserves, and. Um, you know, my, my biggest concern with wildlife discovery is that, you know, Rob's getting close to the end. I mean, like all we are, we're getting older and retirement's in the horizon and all that. And what really kind of frightens me, he's done such a fantastic job. And, you know, I was part of a, a little initiative back when I was on the rec board where um, a lot of people wanted at Ella Farms wanted to kick him out, remove him. Um, and wildlife discovery from Elowa. And, um, and I believe he was the first tenant when um, Elowa Farms reopened up. And luckily, he stayed in there. He's their best tenant. And, but what concerns me is, you know, when he does retire and, you know, a well-earned retirement, whenever it is, but who picks it up? You know, who picks this up and keeps it going? And it is just, I mean, Pete, if you haven't been out there, you should go out there. It's just phenomenal. I've been out there. Where is it? it? It's um, Eloa Farms. Is, oh God, what's the road? It's the road across the street from on Waukegan Road uh, yeah. from the hospital entrance. Yeah. So the hospital, you go east. If you're going north on Waukegan Road, you turn right to go into the hospital. You turn, I, I want to say that's Middle Fork. Turn left and you drive all the way down till it ends. You take a left off Waukegan Road, drive all the way down there. Eloa Farms, which is in itself a beautiful gentleman's farm that was redone and all that, and um, has great things. They have a um, starting to open up their uh, farmer's market, great stuff there. Rob's out there is the big tenant out there with the animals. And um, it's, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. And it's good to see we should have getting come on the, the recognition. I, I've tried. Um, unfortunately, there's a... <laughs> Within the city, it's like not. Uh, oh, it's not uh, they don't approved. To go. <laughs> but uh, you know, I've asked him. Within Rob's the city, a great guy Mayor he's, he's George, a... Justin, we take care of you guys all the time, and it's not good to come on the show. Come on. But all I got to say right now is that wildlife discovery is phenomenal. Rob has done an unbelievable job. And not only with that, but, uh, um, you know, because it runs on donations. I mean, it's not the rec's not, there's not a lot of money, you know, Yeah. <laughs> like with the rec department not being a, a park district, <laughs> they get little tiny money from the city and he falls under this. So it relies to run that place on donations. He's done a phenomenal job of getting donors, big donors, but they need all the help they always can get. And people should donate and even more so you know keeping that there in perpetuity when rob does go and you know 
we as citizens have to go out and figure out and help Rob with this because it's fantastic. It's just and the animals. Rob, good crazy. for you, man. Good for you. I Rob. mean, they had just a turtle there, Pete, <laughs> that just passed. But I think it was like 900 years old or something. It was just gigantic. I mean, soup huge. Oh my god, huge! But um, great soup article, at West Bank. Yeah, great article. Um, you know, there's some other things in here that I kind of. This is the one where it comes out with all the summer stuff. Yeah, and you'll like this one, Pete, on page 12. It's all the rec concerts in the square. Oh, yeah. You know, that's coming out. First concert's June 14th. Well, that's at Northcroft Park. The Feel Good Party Band. Oh, we like to feel good. Yeah, then then the Market Square thing kicks off with good, clean fun. And it's every Thursday. Food trucks or whatever is going to be out there. Yeah. Petty, Petty Kings. Guess, I wonder what that's going to be. Interesting. Petty it's Kings. Good. What do you think that is? uh i don't know come on probably a tom petty cover man maybe pendergrass how about this one <laughs> petty p-e-t-t why god you're how about the next week dancing queen i wonder what that cover band is i don't know you're, one seen, of your favorite the, pete abba what's the, I what's the pronoun <laughs> yeah right then you got uh, classical blast. The class of '68, and then July 21st, the class of '68 playing, and the car show. You better get there fast. So, a lot of good stuff there. What's the next one on here, Pete? Deer Path Classy. Golf Course. Oh, the Deer Path Golf Course. Big, big fan. Big, big golfer there, Pete. But the lawn at Deer Path is opening up this summer. A new the state of the art. Uh, putting, chipping, and training center that they just built, started building last year. It's going to open up this year. Phenomenal stuff. Good Can stuff. I ask you a question about the things that are happening this summer? Yeah. What is this splash pad? The splash pad. That's opening up soon, too. Out at... Uh, on 60? Across from on Lake Forest there. Academy? Yeah, what's the, what's the name? I'm losing my mind. Yeah, it's opening up there. What is the splash difference between pad. having a swimming pool and a splash pad? There's no standing water in the splash pad. Oh, okay. It's just a spongy or whatever type of surface you can jump on and it has water spouts and all that. You can, you know, put your put your Speedo on, Pete, and go stand in there. And <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> I, I think the uh, water spout money. things are going to be, you're going to be taller than all those things that are, so you could be pretty dry there. But So it's basically no, an enema. <laughs> they should have put it down at the beach is what they should have put it down at but that's for another i i'm just saying no no pool but give me a uh splash pad okay yeah <laughs> anything else on your list Scoo? uh what else there's probably no you got a list i'm very impressed i would have stopped harping earlier in the show if i know you had this list i mean it's been i just weeks. got this i just saw this and i said i'm gonna you know, Oh, go through it. Okay. They get this all. Everyone gets this in the mail. Check your mail. I'll, I'll go check. I'll go Good check. Stuff. I'm an anti mail guy. And then you can see George's summer. Yeah, I'm going to look him up online. Send me a link on him. I'll put it in the uh, in the show. George, what is George talking about here? Uh, you know, we got to be more, we got to be nicer, Scoo, so people in, will. Come on our show. Thanks for I, listening. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Lake Forest Podcast. Please give us five stars on Apple's podcast and smash that like button on Facebook, Instagram, follow us on Twitter. Let us know what you like to hear about the upcoming shows. Again, I'm Pete and can be reached at Pete at LakeForestPodcast.com. The link will be in the podcast notes. We thank our Patreon sponsor, Shark Guy Beach Fishing. They're the premier South Florida beach fishing experience at Longboat Key, Florida. Their world-renowned captains not only put you on the fish, but to help you and your family make a memory of a lifetime. Check them out on Facebook or sharkguybeachfishing.com. Contact them today to schedule an outing. Shark Guy is not Scoo's guy. He's my guy for your next charter. Check out Shark Guy Outdoors if you want a good dinosaur tooth. We'd also like to say we're thankful for the Patreon supporters. 
Reverend Luke back from the Church of the Holy Spirit. Matt A, Elizabeth B, Coastal Lance, Otto, RDM, Broadstop Breakfast Group in Kenosha, and Greentown Tavern, Waukegan. We got to get there for breakfast sometime. Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day Ooh, to that's all the right. mothers out there. Happy Mother's Day. Get your cards. Pam, happy Mother's flowers. Day. On behalf of my co-host, Skywalker, we thank you for listening. Thank you.